Joshua 1 says this, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of a nun, you son of a nun. That's the only joke you're getting tonight. I've, I've got nothing else. Moses, my servant is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them. Anyone ready to cross over tonight into the land that God is about to give you? To the Israelites, it says in verse three, I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses, listen to this, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the West. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Tonight, call this message, taking ground, taking ground. Father, I just pray, God, before we take our seat, Lord, that You would be in this message. God, I pray tonight that You would reach people where they're at. You know every individual. You know where they've come from. You know their background. You know their history. You know what they're thinking about. You know what keeps them up at night. So, Father, I pray, Lord, that this would speak to people. God, we wanna walk away from here changed, different. Thank You that significant things are about to happen. In Jesus' Name I pray and everyone said together, Amen. You can grab your seats. Why don't we thank the team as well? Don't go too far. God can still do miracles. Dave, where? I've broken the mic up here. It's all good. Taking ground. Taking ground. You can call it kingdom territory if you want, but... Um, one thing that I think is very much true is that I think humans are territorial. I think we are. Uh, like the other day, I was at the shopping centre, the mall, the mall, if you're American, and I was about to park into my car spot, indicator on and everything. And then someone had the audacity to take my car park. I wanted to let him know that he was number one and I wanted to uh, let him know that he had taken my car space, but you, you'd, be, you'd be pumped to know as a man of God, I just kind of gave him a smile, gave him the thumbs up, all good. See, we're t territorial beings. I mean, if you have toddlers, apparently everything is mine, mine. That's mine. I'm like, really? Do you pay rent? No, it's not yours. But territorial is in our behaviour and wars have been fought for decades over territories, right? Territories, territories. Wars have been fought over, over ground. Nothing screams taking ground or territory more than when you're on a flight and you have one armrest, right? And there's an individual next to you who wants to take territory. I mean, you sit down on that 14 hour flight and you establish your ground and you hold firm and you stand strong and you fix that elbow there. Even though you wanna scratch yourself, you just keep that all there. And then all of a sudden you move your hand and then that individual moves in and then they take territory. And then there's a bit of push and shove and then you're just waiting for that opportunity, that prime moment. As soon as they lift their hands, you're back in there. And then you're holding, anyone know what I'm talking about when you get all territorial? You see, no doubt as ridiculous it may seem, God has called us to take ground, to take territory. You see, God has called each and every one of us to take ground. Throughout Scripture, we see the Kingdom of God taking ground, taking possession, possession of land, possession of heart, possession of mind. You see, God wants to give you 
territory. God wants to give you ground. God wants to give you land. You see, you weren't designed just to be insulated and claustrophobic, but we serve a God who wants you to advance, to move forward, for He desires to give you space, to give you territory, give you ground to see His kingdom come. But maybe you and I, these past two years, maybe you and I have been kind of wrestling, so to speak. Maybe there has been in the past two years, it feels like that armrest, that struggle, where it's been a bit of pushback. There's been a bit of territory taken. There's been a bit of lost ground. There's been a little bit of holding back, withdrawing. And you see, we serve a God who does not want you to draw back. We serve a God who does not want you to hold back and live a life in the background. We serve a God who wants you to advance, who wants you to move forward. And you know what the reality is? That maybe some of us, we've been sitting for too long. Maybe we have been forced to sit for too long. No doubt these past two years have been a bit of ground loss, if I can speak honestly. Maybe you've been feeling like there's been a bit of pushback. But don't forget, we serve a God who wants to give you territory. He wants to give you land. You see, even in the Genesis creation narrative, we see this in Genesis 1, 28, 30, it says this, God blessed them and He said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Look at this, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish and the sea and the birds and the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit within it, they will be yours for food. Look at Psalm 2 verse eight. Ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth, your possession. Look at the great commission. When Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples, disciples of all nations, baptising them in the Name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. What about Jabez's prayer? It says this in 1 Chronicles 4 verse 10, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and what? Enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I may be free from pain. And God granted His request. I hope you're getting the point here. God wants you and I to take ground. As individuals, God wants you to take ground in your relationships. God wants you to take ground in your businesses. God wants you to take ground in your marriage. You know what, as a church, God doesn't want us to just rest on the laurels of the past, although we will honour the past. God wants us to keep taking ground with our church. And no doubt you are a part of a house, you are a part of a church that will continue to take ground and continue to put a stake in the ground and continue to move forward. Why? Because we serve a God that wants you to move Move forward. But no doubt, life and situations, it's disappointments, it's discouragements, no doubt cause you to lose ground. You see, it causes you to take a step back, causes you to just live life withdrawn. Make no mistake, there is a battle for the ground. We are living in times right now where there is a battle for the ground, but the kingdom of God must advance. You see, one thing we must understand is when you're taking territory, someone is losing territory. In other words, where there is faith, you can guarantee there's gonna be a fight. Where there is a message, you can guarantee there's gonna be a little bit of a mess because there is an enemy in John 10 that is real and it will come to steal, kill and destroy the calling of your, on your life. That enemy wants you withdrawn. That enemy wants to push back. That enemy wants to get you withdrawn and keep pushing you back into just the abyss of life and living in the background. But again, I just wanna remind you, we serve a God who does not want you to draw back. He wants you to keep pushing in. You see, one thing I love about the character of God is throughout the Bible, He's described as the lamb and the lion. We get given two distinct pictures of God, Jesus being the lion 
and the Lamb. In John 1, uh, verse 29, stay with me. It says this, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In Revelation 5, it actually gives us a beautiful picture. In Revelation 5, verse 5 to 6, it says, Then one of the elders said to, to, to me, Do not weep, see the lion, describing God as a lion. Then it goes on in verse 6, Then I saw a lamb. Now, this is what I love about the character of God, is that He gives us pictures to kind of us to, uh, for us to get a kind of grasp on who He is and what He is like. And He uses the lamb and He uses a lion. Now, what I have found is that we love the, lion, the, the lamb side of God, don't we? We love the meek and mild lamb. We love the humble lamb, the sacrificial lamb of God that gave up His life. It makes us feel good. We love the grace of God and I love it. I, we love the kindness. We love His meekness. We love the, the picture of a lamb because it's like, oh, of course, the lamb, the lamb of God. This is great. The Lamb of God, yes, we love that side of it. But God is described as a lion as well. What I, look, I'm no zoologist, I'm no animal biologist, but what I do know is you do not mess with a lion. In fact, lions are highly territorial. I remember being in South Africa and um, we're on this safari. And it was amazing, we're seeing all different types of animals and I wanted to see a lion. And there was this particular era, area where there was lions just kind of feeding, doing what lions do. I don't know what they do, they kind of just, they eat, they sleep, they eat, right? And I get up close to the fence, I wanted to get a close look, I wanted to get a good picture of it. And as I got close enough to the fence, this lion just stopped what it was doing and it just kind of looked up at me. kind of licking its lips ready to pounce because I had stepped into its territory. Do you know you serve a God who is territorial? And when the enemy tries to rip us off, you serve a God who wants to deliver you. He's gonna fight for you because He's a God that wants to give you ground. He's a God that wants to keep seeing the kingdom advance and like a lion, it's dangerous. It's powerful, it's mighty, it's majestic. This is beautiful in the way it describes the character and nature of God in that He is mighty, He is powerful, He is majestic, He is beautiful, and He wants to take ground. You see, I want you to understand something. You and I have been called to take ground. I love this song that we've been singing and hopefully we'll sing it in a few moments. I see Him taking ground. I see you press again. Your power is dangerous to the enemy's plan, camp. <laughs> you still do miracles. You will do what you said. Where are the lyrics? For you're the same God now. It, let's do the, the, the ground bit again, all right? Do the ground. See you, King Ground. I see you. You, you're the. Uh, uh, uh. Come on now. You still do. What? Oh, yeah. Sing the taking ground bit again, one more time. Here we go. I see you taking ground. Hey, yeah. Oh my God. Boys to men is coming out in me. I'm sorry. I just wanted to live out that moment. Oh my God. Help me out of this, baby. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Although we go. Sorry. <laughs> uh, to the end of the road. Uh, guys, we're in church. We don't sing secular songs in church. 
I wanna look at Joshua 1 for a moment. The Israelites, they've camped by the east side of the Jordan River and God turns up and He meets a young man, Joshua. Moses is dead, the past is gone. And He meets with a young man, Joshua. Pretty much God says, hey Joshua, it's time to get ready to move and cross and take ground. It's time to pack up everything, prepare the people because we are about to take ground. Joshua, I know you're scared. I know that you're fearful, but don't worry. My spirit is gonna be with you. And I love it because one of the themes that run throughout the book of Joshua is the occupation of land and territory. Joshua goes on throughout Scripture to be a hero and a champion, defeating 31 kings, 31 cities and countries because of what took place here in Joshua 1, where God said, it is time to take ground. You see, I just wanna encourage people right now who are in this room and in our other rooms that God wants you to take ground in your life. And God's turned up tonight and significant things are about to happen and things are about to change. Some of us have been sitting for too long and it's time to advance. It's time to move on. And I just got a word for people here tonight. Advance, move forward for God is about to do something in your life. Three things I wanna leave you with just real quick. It's time to take back territory that has been lost. This is the promise of God I want us to take over our lives. Is this, it's time to take back the territory that's been lost. I love what the prophet Joel says. It says this in chapter two, verse 18. At that, God went into action to get His land back. He took pity on His people. God answered and spoke to His people. Look, listen, I am sending a gift. God wants us to reclaim that which has been lost. And maybe you've lost something. Maybe there are people that have lost their confidence. Maybe there are people that have lost their dreams. Maybe there's people that have lost resources and finances where we serve a God who wants to take that ground again. And tonight's the night where we are going to reclaim territory over our lives. A few years ago, um, our cars got stolen. I was overseas and got a call from Laura. She said, you won't believe it. I woke up and our car's been stolen. I was like, no, you, the car's not been stolen. You've parked it somewhere. You just don't know where you parked it, you know? I just look around, you baby, you may have left it somewhere. She's like, no, our car's been stolen. Long story short, get back home and find out that the car has been stolen. Well, <laughs> it's like, sorry, Laura. <laughs> get back and anyway, a few weeks roll by. Well, the great news is they found our car. In fact, they went on a little police chase. They found it somehow. Someone uh, decided to borrow our car for a long amount of time and they were driving on the road and somehow the police like found them and chased them and then found them and basically ran into a telegraph pole and rode our car off. And basically this is what happened. The police called us and said, hey, this has got your name on it. We've got something that is yours. Your name's on the car and we want you to come back and reclaim what is rightfully yours. And you know what? It just made me think about us here tonight. There are things that need to be reclaimed tonight. It's got your name on it. Confidence has got your name on it. The dreams has got your name on it. And God wants us to reclaim and reclaim what He has given to us. Why? Because we are taking ground in our life. I love what Deuteronomy says and the way Eugene Peterson, how he phrases it. No matter how far away you end up, God, your God will get you out of here and bring you back to this land your ancestors once possessed. It will be yours again. He will give you good life and make you more numerous than your ancestors. The next promise I want you to grab is this, get ready to take new territory. I want someone here to get ready because you're about to step in and take new territory. See, Moses has just died. Joshua is the new leader. In other words, the past is gone and something new is about to happen. But I love in verse two, it says this, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give you. You see, it's real easy to dwell on what used to be, but God is doing something brand new in our lives. And I pray that you're up for the journey. I pray you're up for what's ahead because 
because what's ahead is better than what's been behind. I pray that we would continue to take ground in our life. We're about to plow new ground. I remember being over here just a few years ago, Pastor Brian, Convention Centre wasn't been, hadn't been built yet, but we walked over here and it was just dirt. And I remember Pastor Brian, Pastor Bobby, they got the shovel out and they began to turn new soil because they were breaking new ground. And I just felt like for us here, maybe it's time to get the shovel out again. Some of you haven't picked up a shovel ever, but now it's time to get the shovel out again. And it's time to start to break new ground. And it's time to begin to believe for territory and time to get back what is yours. The team can join me right now. But you see, I really do believe God is gonna give us back territory. You see, the third thing is this, the next promise I want you to hold on to. Everywhere you step your foot, I'll give you territory. We gotta claim that over our lives. You see, verse three, he says, every place that you step your foot, as I promised Moses, I will give you territory. You see, we're living in days, no doubt, it feels like uncharted territory. And I'm gonna continue to believe for leaders all around the world, for wisdom, strength, clarity, peace. Because we are living in these days that are certainly, certainly uncharted territory. But you know what? I've got faith to believe as well that everywhere we step our foot, we're gonna claim territory. We're gonna claim back what may have been taken from some of you taken from some of us. You see, we may sometimes tippy toe it, walk on eggshells because we just don't know because it's like, where, where do we go? It's uncharted territory. But I've just got faith to believe as we continue to fix our eyes on Jesus and as we continue to keep moving forward and seeing the Kingdom of God advance, that God's gonna give us territory in our high schools. God's gonna give us territories in our university. He's gonna give us territories in our workplaces. He's gonna give us territory in our cities and our suburbs, in our football teams and in the cities and of the nations around the globe. You see, I just got faith to believe that God's gonna begin to give territory I wrote this down, this is my prayer for for many of us tonight. You see, I've been praying about this, but my prayer is this, high schools and universities, my prayer is this, that you'd begin to see salvation. For businesses, my prayer is this, that you'd begin to see overflow and abundance. For families, that families would begin to see restoration take place, ground would be taken, restoration begin to take place. For our church, that we'd begin to continue to see the community and the reach and the influence, disciples being made, leaders being raised up, helping those in need. You see, it's time to move forward. It's time to advance. It's time to take ground. It's time to take territory. In a moment, we're gonna sing that because I think we need to kind of sing it out loud until we believe that. This is the Gospel, you know. The Gospel, everything about the Gospel was taking ground. The very beginning of time, we lost ground. God created, He said, go forth, be fruitful, increase, subdue the earth, have dominion. And we lost that ground, but God in His goodness, the Kingdom of God advanced when Christ Jesus came on planet Earth and established the Kingdom of God on Earth. And He began to take possession back from where the enemy had ripped people off. Jesus began to restore, Jesus began to heal, Jesus began to bring peace because He's Jesus and He's taking ground and He's raising up a nation, He's raising up a country that is gonna start to take possession again. This is the good news. The Gospel is gonna keep advancing. So I wonder, come on church, we're gonna get a bit uncomfortable because we're gonna begin to sing this until we believe it. Ben Gorkroger, God's gonna give you ground. 
God's going to begin to give you territory. Where there's been worry, where there's possibly been doubt, God's going to begin to give you ground, territory, and where you're stepping into uncharted waters, uncharted territory, you're going to be given ground, territory. So I want you tonight, as with many of us, we're going to sing out loud right now. We're going to believe that God's going to begin to give us ground. So come on, Taya, Dave and the team, let's believe right now for God to do something in this moment. Then we'll pray for a few groups of people. Come on, sing it out. Do you believe it? You still do miracles. You will do what it's time you to take ground again. For you're the same God now as you've always been. Hey, your spirit breaking Come on, church. Your kingdom moving in. Your victory claims the ground at the end of the day. At the end of the day. You still do worship. I really believe God's going to give back territory that has been lost. If you'd be willing, if you'd have the courage right now, you know you've lost something. You've lost ground somewhere. Maybe it's in your confidence. Maybe it's in your dreams. Maybe it's been in finances or maybe resources. Maybe it's just something internally going on. You just know you've you've drawn back. You've, you've stepped away because disappointment, discouragement, the enemy's plans in your life. Remember, we serve God who is a lion. We serve God who is territorial. And tonight He wants to push you in and He wants you to advance. Would you be willing if that's you? Would you be willing? Come on, raise your hands right now. We're going to believe God. Look at this. Many people, many people. Father God, right now, in the Name of Jesus, restore tenfold, God, what has been lost. Father, I believe right now You're bringing confidence back. We are taking ground again. So Father, dreams be renewed. Lord, remind them of what they've been called to. Lord, remind them of that they're set apart. Lord, that You are going to do something significant in their life. So Father, we want to take ground. We want to take territory. Father, we lift our eyes on You, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Come on, keep praying, church. Let's sing. Come on. stepping into something, maybe entrepreneurs right now, you're stepping and breaking into new ground. I really believe God's gonna go before you where there's been worry, where there has been anxiety. Know that your God goes before you. He defends for you. He fights your battles for He is God all by Himself. And maybe you've been worrying about provision. Maybe you've been worrying about ideas. Just know God goes before you. He's making a way where there is no way. If that's you right now, come on, raise your hand. You're stepping into new ground. You're stepping into new territory. Many people around. Father, right now we thank You that You are breaking ground. Lord, we decide that everywhere that we are gonna step our feet, God, You're gonna give territory. You're gonna give us ground. So God, we take ground, God. We take ground for Your Kingdom. We take ground for the Kingdom of God to keep advancing in Jesus' Name. Come on, I want us to keep singing, take ground. Come on, sing it. I see you taking around I see you pressing ahead Your power is dangerous Sing that again I see you taking around Come on I see you taking around I see you taking around And I see you pressing ahead Come on keep singing that Just the team just 
the church. Come on. Sing that again. Believe it. Come on, keep singing it till you believe it. if we just just linger here for a moment, just close your eyes, just if you will, surrender yourself and just raise your hands. God's speaking to us, speaking to individuals, speaking to us as a community. Just, just linger here for a moment. God's just moving, God's moving. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus. Taking ground. Jesus. God.
God's renewing things in people, renewing things, renewing hope, renewing fresh life, vision, dreams. Jesus. Thank You, You watch over us, God. You're a God that, whose hand is upon us, Your protection, Your provision. You're a breakthrough God. You're a God who fights our battles. You're a God who's defeated the enemy. Lord, we take ground. We wanna see the Kingdom continue to advance. You know, it says, just before I, I finish up, it says in Joshua 21, 43, it says, so the Lord gave Israel all the land He had sworn to give their ancestors and they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them rest on every side, just as He had sworn to their ancestors. Not one of the, their enemies withstood them. The Lord gave all their enemies into their hands. Not one of the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. He's a God who fulfills His promises. He's a God who delivers. He's a God who takes ground. Before I hand it back to the team, we do this every week. And if you know, if you call Hillsong home, you know what this moment means. We're gonna pray for people who've never accepted Jesus to be their Lord and Saviour. Right now, I'm about to pray a powerful prayer of asking Him to be Lord and Saviour of your life. Friend, you see, we've all messed it up. You may have walked in here going, I've, I've messed it up. I, I don't know if this God would wanna get to know me. Trust me, He does. He's a God whose arms are wide open saying to Him, whosoever will may come. You see, even when we messed up, made mistakes, the Bible calls it sin. Christ Jesus still, whilst we were in our sin, He still moved towards humanity. In fact, He took the ground towards humanity and He healed and He restored and He died for each and every one of us. Do you know why? Because He's a God of grace. He's a God of love. He loves you so much and He has a plan and a purpose for your life. Tonight, would you come to know Him? Would you come to ask for forgiveness and ask Him to live in your life? Tonight's the night where you can know Him as your Lord and Saviour. Maybe you prayed this prayer before, but maybe during the pandemic, maybe somehow you've drifted, you've gotten distracted. Why not let today be the day where you come back and recalibrate and you fix your eyes on Him again? Maybe you've never prayed this prayer before. I'm talking to you. I'm gonna say this prayer out loud in a moment. And if you wanna be included in this prayer, you can say this prayer with me. But I wanna have every head bowed, every eye closed all over this place. And if you know that's you, Taking ground starts with a relationship with Jesus. Give your life to Him, friend, He loves you. Bible says, whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So if you know that's you, when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand high enough and long enough for me to see it. And I'll include you in this prayer while no one's looking around. Are you ready? This is for you. One, two, three, all over this place. Beautiful, beautiful. Many hands being raised right now. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So good, so good. Wow. You can put your hands down. Church, can we really applaud all these people that made that decision? <laughs> Friend, I want you to say this prayer out loud with me. And even if you didn't raise your hand, but you know that you should have, this is for you as well. And as one big church family, come on, you know what to do. This is, this is a special moment. Say this out loud, church. Dear Jesus, tonight I surrender all. I need Your forgiveness. I wanna start this journey of following You. God, I need Your guidance. I need Your leadership. I need You to show me who You are. Lord, as I get to know You, help me in Jesus' Name. Amen, Amen, Amen. Come on, church. Come on, we can do better than that. There were many people making a decision. Listen, we wanna give you a Bible. It's a gift, beautiful. Uh, you know, uh, New Testament Bible to mark this day. Please, you might already have a Bible, uh, but please take this as our gift. 
write the date in where you decided, where the ground taking started, where you decided I was gonna follow Jesus. There's people waving it around up there. They're hoping that you'll connect with them. This is where the journey of following Jesus begins. And so look, we, we gather here every Sunday. So you come back next week, we're gonna be here, but we also gather during the midweek and we have discipleship groups. Discipleship's another word of becoming like Christ. And we talk about the Bible, we, we study it and we get around and we have food and we have fun. And please come and start a conversation because we want you to connect into what is a family, what is a community. And sometimes it takes a little conversation. Sometimes you've got to get a little out of your comfort zone and ask, how do I get connected? These guys, they're going to help you get started on this journey of following Jesus, the discipleship journey. So come on to church. One more time, let's give it up for everyone. Nathaniel, 